It's time for metal versus metal. Because in today's video, we're going head to head with two of the most popular travel credit cards ever released. Hey everyone, it's Mark. I'm here to help you put more money in your pocket through credit cards and smart financial habits. If that sounds good to you, then do me a quick favor and click on the like and subscribe button down below. Also be sure to check out the links down below in the description area to apply for a new credit card and to get two free stocks from Webull when you open a brand new account and deposit $100 onto your brokerage account. I'd love to know which two free stocks you get. So we've got card number one and card number two, but now we gotta figure out which one is right for you, starting with today's agenda. We're going to be talking about the welcome bonuses on both cards as of April 2021, followed by how each one earns and redeems points. Then we'll talk about the main benefits and do a side-by-side -side comparison to help you ultimately decide which one is the better fit for you and which one to get. And as you can imagine, the battle between these two cards is going to be intense. And that's because these two cards have been at war with each other since 2016 when the Sapphire Reserve first came out. So between the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the MX Platinum, let's see which one should end up in your wallet. Follow me. We'll begin with the American Express Platinum Card. The welcome bonus as of April 2021 is 100,000 points after you spend $5,000 in the first six months of card membership. Then you'll also be able to earn 10 points per dollar at US gas stations and US supermarkets on up to $15,000 in combined purchases for the first six months. Now I do realize this offer may be targeted. You may see more points, you may see fewer points. It just depends on what you're able to get during this time. So if you're able to find the 100,000 point offer targeted to you, the value of that welcome bonus will be anywhere from $600 up to around $2,000 on average, depending on how you redeem your points. And as great as Amex is, they don't make it that straightforward to redeem your points because there are a lot of different values for your points based on what you actually choose. So we'll go over that in just a moment. Now, putting the limited time welcome bonus aside, here's how you'll earn points long term. You'll get five points per dollar on flights booked directly with the airlines on the airline websites or through AmexTravel.com. You'll also get five points per dollar on prepaid hotels via AmexTravel.com and then one point per dollar on all other purchases. The annual fee on this card is $550. That costs a lot more than the City Double Cash card. American Express does give you some great value for your points in certain situations, but not in every situation. So to start, if you redeem your points for travel using transfer partners, you may be able to get the best value for your points being around two cents each on average. So as an example, a 100,000 point welcome bonus would be worth $2,000. However, if you prefer a more straightforward approach for a flat rate for your points, you can get 0.7 cents each for hotels, car rentals, cruises, and vacations, or a flat one cent per point toward flights. This would make 100,000 points worth $700 or $1,000. And third, you have the option to do cash back as a statement credit using the cover your card charges feature on your account. That gives you a flat 0.6 cents per point in value. So 100,000 points are worth $600. Now I'll also announce that right now as I'm making this video, Amex is running a limited time promotion to redeem your points at a full one cent per point toward cash back as a statement credit. Again, it is currently a limited time situation. I have no idea how long it will last right now because Amex has not announced that. I really hope that it does become a permanent benefit because it's really lagging behind other cards from Chase and Citi and even US Bank in terms of getting good value for cash back. Amex has always struggled with that. So if you're not traveling much right now and don't see yourself doing much of it in the near future and you've got some expenses that you'd like to cover, now would be at least an ideal time to use your points toward cash back if you can get that full one cent per point. And one more time, just in case anybody from American Express is watching this video, please make one cent per point at least the minimum redemption option for cash back. Yes, you can do better with the Charles Schwab version of the Platinum card, but most people don't have that or even know about it and also don't want to go through the hassle of opening up their brokerage account and going through all the loopholes to get it. So since a lot of the other major card holders now offer you a flat one cent per point for cash back, Amex, it's time to catch up. Now, since using airline transfer partners tends to yield the best average value for your points, here's a current list of all the airline programs and hotel programs into which you can convert your Amex membership awards points. The majority of these do transfer one-to-one, -one, meaning 10,000 Amex points will become 10,000 air miles in the respective program to which you transfer, and you can convert at the same rate to hotel points as well. Now, do realize that some transfer rates may vary, especially when limited time promotions come around where you might be able to get even higher value. 
value. Now the Platinum card has more benefits than any other card that I can think of. In fact, I could probably do a full 10 to 15 minute video just on the benefits. So to keep things short and focus on our comparison, I'm gonna go through these as quickly as I possibly can so you at least have good exposure to what this card can offer you. At the moment, there has been a temporary credit for PayPal that is $30 per month, and that goes away at the end of June 2021. Then we've got Uber rides with Platinum up to $200 per year. That gives you $15 per month and $35 in December towards rides or food delivery. Next, we have an airline fee credit, also $200 per year, where you choose one airline from a pre-selected list, and that will reimburse you for incidental charges. Then we've got a global entry slash TSA pre-check credit up to $100 to cover the cost of your application application fees every four and a half years, and a shop sacks with platinum benefit also $100 per year. That's broken down to a $50 statement credit from January through June, and a second $50 statement credit July through December. The final benefit on the bottom left-hand side is the global lounge collection, which allows you to get into a bunch of different airport lounges worldwide. Moving over to the right-hand side of your screen is the International Airline Program, where you can get lower fares for premium cabin tickets, up to eight tickets per booking. The Hotel Collection, providing a $100 property credit, plus a room upgrade when you book through the portal for two or more consecutive nights. The Fine Hotels and Resorts Program, giving you VIP perks at select luxury properties around the world. You've then got Elite Status with Marriott and Hilton programs, giving you the gold level of status in each one of those, plus Rental Car Elite Status with a few different programs, including national. Lastly, there are no foreign transaction fees on this card. And now it's time for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Here we go! The welcome bonus on this card as of April 2021 is 60,000 points after spending $4,000 in the first three months of card membership. The value of this offer ranges from $600 up to around $1,200 or so on average depending on how you redeem your points. And speaking of points, here's how you will earn them long term. You'll get triple points on all travel purchases, triple on dining, and one point per dollar on all other purchases. The annual fee on this card is $550. Sounds familiar. Almost like Chase and Amex are competing with each other. When you're ready to redeem your points, you've got a lot of different ways to do so. The main four here are featured on the screen, starting with travel using transfer partners. The average value you may be able to achieve here is around two cents per point, so your 60,000 points will be worth $1,200. If instead you redeem through the Chase Travel Portal, you will get 1.5 cents per point, and that is not an average, that is a consistent flat rate, and that will work for flights, hotels, car rentals, cruises, vacations, and experiences that you can all book through the Ultimate Rewards Portal. This makes your 60,000 points worth $900. Chase also has a very innovative feature called Pay Yourself Back, done through the same portal as the Travel Portal, it's just a different menu option, and you still get 1.5 cents per point to cover certain charges and select categories. At the moment, it works for charges in grocery stores, dining at restaurants, including takeout and delivery, home improvement stores, and select charities. Your 60,000 point welcome bonus will still be worth $900 using this method. Last up, we have cash back as a statement credit or a direct deposit to a checking or savings account. This gives you a flat one cent per point in value, so your 60,000 points will be worth $600. So if you prefer cashback right now, then the pay yourself back feature will be the best option for you, although it only works for select categories. And Chase did announce the pay yourself back feature as a temporary benefit, and I have no idea if that will become permanent or if it will eventually be phased out at some point. So while it's still active, definitely take advantage of it if it made sense for you. Otherwise, the flat rate of one cent per point for cashback will consistently be there because it has been since the car was first launched. Similar to American Express, Chase also has their own list of airline transfer partners and hotel transfer partners listed here on the screen. Some of them overlap, some of them do not. And again, most of these transfer one-to-one. -one. So 10,000 Chase points will become 10,000 air miles or 10,000 hotel points. At least that's the case most of the time. Sometimes the rates may vary, especially when a points promotion or bonus occurs. Now this card has some pretty great benefits as well, but they're definitely different. Chase also provides you with an annual travel credit, but this one is up to $300 per year for travel purchases. And through the end of 2021, it will also cover purchases made at gas stations and grocery stores. You'll also receive a TSA pre-check or global entry credit covering your application fee costs up to $100 every four years, followed by airport lounge access, but this one's only with Priority Pass Select. As a Visa Infinite card, you'll also be given access to the Luxury Hotel and Resort Collection, which gives you VIP perks at top hotels and resorts around the world. 
Then for their DoorDash partnership, you'll get Dash Pass for one year, plus $60 in statement credits through December 31st, 2021. And then with Lyft, you'll be able to earn 10 points per dollar through March 2022, plus a Lyft Pink membership for a full year. With Peloton, you'll get $100 back on Peloton Digital or the All Access membership. And there are also no foreign transaction fees on this card either. It's now time to go side by side. So let's see how these two cards stack up against each other. Both will charge you $550 per year to get access to the rewards programs and all the associated benefits. However, for the sign-up bonus, I think we have a pretty clear winner. The Amex Platinum card will give you 100,000 points, plus 10 points per dollar in select categories for the first six months. Now, if cashback is your thing, you'll walk away with $600 from either card, so that's a tie. But when it comes to travel, the Amex Platinum card will likely give you much more value, especially if you're able to hit the average of around $2,000 total for that welcome bonus. For that reason, I give the first place medal to the American Express Platinum card. Now for earning points, I color-coded the one that was most similar between the two in blue. So for the Amex Platinum card, you'll get five points per dollar on flights and five points per dollar on prepaid hotels, whereas the Sapphire Reserve will give you triple points on all travel. So while you'll earn at a slower rate in select categories with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, it does cover a much broader array of travel categories, including rental cars, bridges, toll roads, parking parking lots, and a whole lot more. Now for the redemption side of the equation. When you redeem for travel using transfer partners in the brown slash orange color, they're pretty much tied in terms of equal value at around two cents per point on average. But if you drop down one row to the purple colored font when you redeem for travel via the portal, the massive winner here is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, giving you a full one and a half cents per point, where the platinum card only gives you 0.7 to one cent. For cashback option number one, as a statement credit, you'll get 0.6 cents per point from the Amex Platinum Card, or potentially a full one cent per point on a temporary basis if you were targeted for that offer. Again, I hope that becomes permanent. And the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives you a full one cent per point consistently. Then for cashback option number two, covering specific categories, there is no option to get elevated value for select categories on the Platinum Card, but the Sapphire Reserve will give you that 50% boost at 1.5 cents per point for those select pay yourself back categories. For all of those reasons, I give the first place medal to the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Now we'll move on to the benefits. Again, I did some color coding here for the ones that were most similar between the two cards. So for the credits in blue, we have a travel related credit. The Amex Platinum gives you $200 per year for airline incidentals. So it is very, very restricted. Whereas the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives you a $300 very broad travel credit that also works temporarily for gas and grocery purchases through the end of 2021. Those are then followed by specific partner benefits. The next major category is lounge access, and they both give you priority pass, but there is a distinction here. The Amex Platinum Card gives you unlimited access for you and up to two guests, but the restaurants as part of the priority pass network are not included. On the other hand, with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you still get unlimited access for you and up to two guests, but all of the priority pass restaurants are included. So even though Chase does give you the better priority pass membership, Amex gives you way broader access to a lot more different lounge networks. For elite status, only the Platinum card will give you Marriott Bonvoy Gold and Hilton Honors Gold, and both cards will give you some degree of rental car privileges. For hotel benefits, both cards give you access to special portals to get room upgrades, free breakfast, early check-in, late checkout, etc. Although Amex gives you two different levels of programs. Both cards come with TSA PreCheck and Global Entry credits. Neither one will charge you foreign transaction fees, and both cards will charge you for authorized users. For the benefits, I give the first place medal to the American Express Platinum Card. Now we'll briefly look at the airline transfer partners here. I color coded all the ones that the two cards have in common in dark navy blue, and then the unique ones that do not overlap in red at the bottom. Here I'll give the first place medal to the American Express Platinum card because the list is much longer. And for the hotel transfer partners, either card will give you access to three programs. The overlap here is the Marriott Bonvoy program, and the unique ones are listed there in red. So here I'll give the first place medal to both cards as a tie because it really comes down to which programs you value and the types of travels that you do most frequently. So which is best? Well, let's find out. 
The Amex Platinum card will be best for earning points on flights and hotels as long as those hotels are prepaid, and also for redeeming points for international flights using transfer partners. The Platinum card also wins very easily for giving you access to the broadest array of VIP perks and elite status. That said, the Chase Sapphire Reserve will be best for earning points on all travel and redeeming for any type of travel or cash back. That's why it's best for the strongest overall rewards value with easy to use points. So while that was definitely helpful, it may not narrow it down quite enough for you to make a decision. Let's take it one step further. You'll want to consider getting the Platinum card if you travel frequently, fly international and or with Delta Airlines specifically, pay for flights directly with the airlines, meaning not via third-party portals like Expedia or Kayak, if you value lounge access and elevated experiences more than earning a lot of points quickly, if you spend on Uber, Saks Fifth Avenue, air incidental charges, etc., basically allowing you to use all of the credits, and if you stay at upscale or luxury hotels, especially with Marriott or Hilton. So if that sounds like you, then you'll want to get this card. However, you may want to get the Sapphire Reserve if you travel frequently, fly domestic, especially with Southwest or United Airlines, or internationally as well, if you pay for any kind of travel in any kind of way, including third-party portals like Expedia because you'll also earn triple points. This may also be the better card for you if you value earning points quickly with greater redemption value more than VIP treatment. Also, if you spend on DoorDash, Lyft, Peloton, etc., and if you stay at any kind of hotel, especially Hyatt, which may be one of the most valuable transfer partners. And if that sounds like you, then you'll want to get this card. But there's still a few scenarios where you may want to say no to both. You'll likely want to avoid both of these cards if you don't travel several times per year, if you stay at Airbnbs instead of hotels, although the Chase Sapphire Reserve may be a possible exception. The reason being is that you'll still earn triple points if you pay cash and charge to your card, but when you redeem your points for an Airbnb, you can only get one cent per point instead of the 1.5 cent per point value because the only main way to do so is using cash back. Although you can also redeem your points for Airbnb gift cards at one cent per point, but sometimes gift cards also have special promotions where you might be able to get them for 10, 15, 20% off. So also do consider if you're a big Airbnb fan, look at the portal redemptions for gift cards every so often to see if any of the Airbnb ones do go on sale. You'll still want to avoid both of these cards if you prefer cash back or if you're a budget traveler. Again, here the Chase Sapphire Reserve may be a possible exception because you can get 1.5 cent per point as a flat redemption rate via the portal. And lastly, there at the bottom, if you don't like cards with high annual fees, say no to these cards, especially if you're not able to use the main credits that come with them to help you get some of the value back. So there you have it, the head-to-head -head comparison between the American Express Platinum Card and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Hopefully some of those use cases or word pictures that I kind of painted there at the end helped you a little bit to decide which card may be a better fit for you, if either one at all. Regardless, either of these two cards or perhaps both may be a good fit for you if a lot of those different bullet points really represent your travel habits and spend habits. So with all that said, if you enjoyed today's video and believe it could benefit others, then please help me get it in front of more people by liking this video, subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. Then be sure to check out the links down below in the description area to apply for a new credit card and to get two free stocks from Webull when you open a new account and deposit $100 onto your brokerage account. I'd love to know which two free stocks you get. So between these two cards, which one do you like best? Which one do you already have? And which one do you want to apply for most? Let me know down below in those comments. I thank you all for watching today's video. I hope it brought you some great value. I'll see you again in future videos. And until then, remember, you are great. What's that? You want a drop test and a weight comparison? Ah, of course, you're on the Mark Reese channel. Let's do that. And for the weight comparison, we'll first start with a plastic card, the old City Thank You Preferred card at five grams. Then the MX Platinum card, 18 grams. And the Chase Sapphire Reserve. 13 grams. Winner.